Jenny O'Connell's debut book project, Finding Petronella, traces her 2014 solo trek across Finland, following the footsteps of a female legend into the heart of the Arctic Circle. She's a graduate of the Stone Coast MFA in Creative Writing program and a 2019 Maine Literary Award finalist. And her writing has appeared in literary journals and magazines across the country. An outdoor guide with 10 years of experience, Jenny's work carves out space for women in the wild, explores themes of risk-taking and transformation, and asks questions of the way we live and the way we die. Um, I'd like to start tonight with a question. When was the last time you did something that truly scared you? When was the last time you pushed yourself outside your comfort zone in a way that made you feel alive? In 1949, Petronilla Vandermore sailed to Finland. She was a 26-year-old Dutch woman who wanted to be a writer. She got in with the Helsinki elite, she had thrilling stories from the Dutch resistance, and she used her writing background to interview interesting people. Eventually, she ran out of money, she ditched her hotel bills in Helsinki, and she fled the police up north to Lapland. <laughs> On the way, she met a geologist named Klaus Seinajarvi, who was headed to the gold rush. Together, they hiked over 110 kilometers into what is now called Lemonyoki National Park, where Petronella lived and worked with the gold miners, becoming their beloved friend, until she was arrested by the secret police three months later, put on trial in Helsinki, and deported. And then she disappeared. In her absence, Petronella's legend grew. She became the subject of books, a musical, the name of a street in Inari, a restaurant, a song. Two hills and lemon yoki are named after her breasts. Gold miner humor. <laughs> uh, and the modern day gold miners still tell her stories. When I met her in 2013, they had been searching for her for 65 years. What sets a life in motion? For me, it was an icy car wreck on Interstate 88 in upstate New York. My car flipped over the guardrail and rolled three times into the median. I emerged without a scratch, but that night, the wiring in my brain changed. At first, it was just small decisions that I made differently. Climb the tree on the side of the road to look at the sky, eat a second helping of cake, jump in the ocean with all my clothes on, get up a little earlier to watch the sun break over the trees. There were little things that made me feel closer to my heartbeat. I almost did them unconsciously. After the wreck, I moved to San Francisco to build a career as an outdoor educator. I lived fast in my early 20s. I guided expeditions in the Peruvian Andes and the California backcountry. I became a raft guide. I carved out spaces for women to lead in the wild. And in early 2013, I took my first creative writing course, which lit in me a passion. That same March, I brought over a quiche and a bottle of wine from my neighbor Solange, who was taking care of her 89-year-old mother. Her mother had dementia, and she started the conversation with, I walked to Lapland. Petronella would die in the next year, and out of her 89 years of life, she had chosen that memory for me. That was the moment I started thinking with my gut instead of my brain. And when you do that, you decide things like, I'm going to walk across Finland. <laughs> and in, instead of asking yourself important questions like, why? <laughs> you say, what am I going to pack in my backpack? And then when you figure that out, suddenly you have a path forward and it doesn't seem so crazy after all. So one year later, I packed my backpack, flew to Helsinki, and began a long trek north. This is probably a good time to tell you that Petronella did not walk across Finland. <laughs> she met some guys at the railroad, railroad station and took a bus north. But I didn't figure that out until later. <laughs> I had to try. <laughs> so to take this risk, I had people who believed in me before I knew how to believe in me. I had these pants, which my sister and I call adventure pants. <laughs> Um, as silly as it sounds, when I wear them, I'm already engaging with the ridiculous, so it doesn't matter what society thinks of me. And it's impossible to take myself seriously, so I can do anything. <laughs> and I had enough courage for just one step. Definitely not the whole thing. I was terrified of my journey. But it is my experience that when you take that first step over the edge of your comfort zone, the universe or the road or whatever you believe in rises up to meet you. For me, that step was buying a ticket to Finland. 
In June of 2014, I walked and hitchhiked the long, flat highway from Helsinki to Lapland. Solange met me in Lemon Yoki, and we returned Petronella's ashes to the place she loved. I lived three months with the modern-day Lemon Yoki gold miners, a colorful cast of characters who live at the end of the world and understand what wildness has to teach us, that to be alive is to pay attention. When you stop paying attention, you start dying. Risk is a reordering of priorities. It's not so much about going against as it is valuing more. I value experiences over money. I value growth and transcendence over stability. The gold miners live for the thaw each spring, when they can leave the lives they've made for the ones that they want. I watched them teach their children how to love the river. I sat with them under the midnight sun, and they cried and talked about freedom. As an artist, positive risk-taking has become a theme in my career. I mentor my creative writing students to be bold in sharing their vulnerability, and I try to do the same. I guide outdoor expeditions that help people learn and push the boundaries of their bodies. And we let it in, and we let it change our patterns of living. Our society is averse to risk, and that is a problem. Without taking a leap for the foolish things, the crazy ideas, what's to say we'll take a risk when it matters, when there is something to stand up for? If my car wreck taught me one thing, it's that we get to live in these bodies just once. What will you do with your time? I'm going to leave you from this, with this passage from my book, From Up on the Fells in Lemon Yoki. I squint toward Morgamoya one last time for a hint of Petronella. I may never find her, but perhaps that's the point. She keeps my eyes searching the fells as I shamble after her, life in one hand, death in the other. She struggles up mountains and crashes down gorges, fights the current across the river, stirs my feet to follow. She keeps me curious as I sit with the gold miners and listen to their stories. We watch the midnight sun pretend to dip into Norway and rise again. We cry and talk about freedom. Thank you so much.